work. Uh, so work again, work time, work equals force times distance. And well, so we have a distance given by the vector d. And well, recall that a force, I mean the force in which we can push a chair, a table, it doesn't have to be horizontal all the time. That's pretty much the basic case you learn in basic science. But of course, you know, you can, you can open a door or pull or push a table in, in different inclinations or, or just horizontally. So in general, we have some force acting at an angle on, on an object, you know, and well, so even if you push, uh, if I push my, uh, if I push a chair right here with 50 newtons, so to speak, well, because I, I'm, I'm pushing it with an angle, it's not all the 50, uh, I'm not taking advantage of the entire 50 newtons to push the, the chair, in fact, it's just some portion of that force acting on the surface, and well, that portion, again, if we give it a name, you might recall that's really the projection, right? That's the projection onto uh, the projection onto the distance, you know. And but of course, I mean, if it was horizontal, it would be, you know, that whole force. And well, so in general, in vector notation, work equals the force times distance. And notice in this case, this is the dot product between two vectors. The dot product between two vectors is equal to a scalar. And well, so well, one of the most important physical applications, of course, is to find the work done by an object moving in a force field. So that's what we're going to use this line integrals for, to find that force. And, um, or that, I mean, to find that work done. And well, so, let's consider this diagram right here. So we have a particle moving along this, this path right here. All right, so in this case, let's focus on these two vectors. You know, the force vector that it's acting on the particle, but we also consider this tangential vector because in this case, we want to know how much of that force given by <clears throat> given by the by the force field is acting on the on the um on the on the ten on the unit tangent vector which is related to its velocity at every single point you know so we can have another another big t vector right here you know or another here so we want to know how much force is being applied uh, for onto that vector and in this case let's go back to the same image right here however this force vector is going to act onto the unit tangent vector and well that that portion of force acting onto that tangential vector or that unit tangent vector uh, again, it's not going to be the whole force, it's just going to be some portion of it, it's just going to be a projection, right? It's only this amount of force, all right, that will act onto the ten unit tangent vector. Well, so let's recall what the projection formula it is. So in this case, we want to find the projection of the force F onto the tangential vector. So in the same way that we found the projection of u onto v in a more simpler way back at the beginning of the semester, well, we're going to apply it to force onto a tangential. And no, we're not going to calculate any tangential. Remember how painful were, how painful, how painful those were? No, we're not going to do that. So we're just going to define this as well. Number one, the dot product of the two vectors f and t divided by the magnitude of the tangential vector times the tangent vector. Well, in this case, we can reduce, oh, it's the tangential, I mean, the magnitude squared. So we can Im immediately simplify something here because this t vector is the unit tangential vector. What's the magnitude of the unit tangential vector? One, so one square is gonna be a one and well ft f dot with t times the vector t 
that's going to be what will be what will be left with what we will be left with all right so that's the projection vector all right but now we don't want to know the vector we want to know how much is that force how much force is acting onto that ta unit tangent vector so we want to find the magnitude of that vector well so number one the magnitude of this vector the magnitude of the projection vector would be well so you can you can think of the following you know like uh, for example, if we, if we have the vector 3i, you know, a very simple vector, what is, that, what is the direction of, of the magnitude of that vector? That's 3. What is the magnitude of 7j, for example? 7, well, so this is a vector, let's call it i, well, in this case it's denoted big T for, for tangential. But well, its uh, its magnitude would be that coefficient, which in this case it's just f, whatever f dot t will be. All right, could be five, could be seven, could be even zero if the two vectors are orthogonal. All right, and well, in this case, recall that we defined the dot product between two vectors as the product of their magnitudes. times the cosine of the angle in between and well so that's uh, that's the definition that's going to take us back to the definition of the dot product between uh, <clears throat> the two vectors you know so force times distance you know the same way we did it for work force times the tangent vector you know so that's going to that's going to be it and but well we know this magnitude is also one so this is just the force times cosine theta. All right. Well, so if we go back to define, to, or to, if we go back to find the work uh, of a, of a, over um, over a over a vector field F onto uh, onto the tangential, well, of course we're not going to use the ds because parameterizing over arc length it's not as easy as parameterizing over t so okay let's let's redefine this integral the integral over c of the vector f dotted with the vector t ds well one thing to recall is that the, the tangential vector isn't it the derivative of r of t divided by its magnitude and ds we redefined ds in the previous part of this section by replacing ds with the magnitude of r prime of t dt so okay let's label this so you can see what i'm talking about so yeah this is the tangential and all this right here, all this factor is ds, the differential of the uh, the differential for for arc length in terms of t. Okay. So well, so that means we can rewrite the integral in the following way. So that's simply the integral over c of f dotted with the derivative of the vector valued function dt that's it and that's because check this out these two factors cancel out and well instead of working with over ds which is our function we can still easily work keep easily working with the parameter t all right and well that's going to take us to the following definition well so the redefining the integral but in this case over f well that f let's keep in mind that that f is a function of x y or c which at the same time they're all functions of t so only single variable independent function and well times the vector value the derivative of the vector valued function with respect to 
And we use this definition to find the work done by a force field in, mo in moving a, a particle along the given path. And it could be a circular path, a linear path, well, depending on how, the, how do we parameterize it, all right? So let's look at one example. So let's find the work done by the force field f of x, y, x squared i minus x, y, j, which is well, it's actually given. Uh, I'm giving you the picture of the vector field. And in moving along the quarter circle, r of t cosine t plus i sine cosine t i plus sine t j, right? And in this case, well, because it's only a quarter along the quarter circle, that's why the limits of integration will be from 0 to pi over 2. Otherwise, if, we, if it were for the entire circle, around the circle, well, so from 0 to pi. All right, so there's some preliminary work that we need to do before, um, before even setting up the integral. All right, and that is, well, number one, uh, let's, uh, let's set up our integral work equals the integral over c of f dot dr. So we need dr, and dr will be, will come from the derivative of, of this vector, of this vector valued function. So we're given r of t equals cosine t sine t. And well, we take the derivative r prime that's a negative sign, t cosine t. And well, just for the sake of notation and the connection with the integral, we can always think of this r prime of t is the same as saying dr dt, which is negative sign t. It's the same thing, just different notation for the derivative. That just so I can write this vector value, the derivative of the vector valued function in differential form instead. So you can easily connect with what we're going to do here. So that's dr. That's going to be uh, negative sine t cosine t dt. So all this right here, let me use different color, all this will be replaced over here. And what are we going to do with the function? Well, so for the function f, the vector field f, uh, notice we have components for x and components for y. So, uh, let me find it. Okay, here's a good color. So, this is x, this is y. Just substitute where it corresponds. Oh, I need a different color. So, to denote x and to denote y, and so that's x, and that's y, yeah, that works. So y is going to go here, and x is going to go here and here. So, um, so if we have, number one, f of x, y equals to x squared negative x, y, we can write this f in terms of t. And just substitute where it corresponds. So that's cosine squared t, comma, negative sine t cosine t. Okay? And we're ready to put all the parts together. So all this madness big F of t will be here and we will dot it with this quantity right here. So, do I have another cool color? Uh, oh, I'm gonna do this one. So this one, whoops. Yeah, I made the highlight. So this is gonna be here. And just put everything together. And well, so the work done will be the integral from zero to pi over two of f in terms of t, that's cosine squared t, comma negative sine t, cosine t, 
and dot it with a differential vector for dr, which is negative sine t cosine t dt and everything is in terms of t. Oh, by the way, it's important to denote the direction of motion of the particle along this quarter circle. So, I'm going to put like arrows here to denote that the particle is traveling along this direction, all right? In counterclockwise direction, to be more specific. And, well, so the rest of the problem, you know, it's distributing. Uh, well, not, well, not distributing, rather performing the dot product here. So W equals the integral from zero to, to, to pi over two. So that's cosine squared times the negative sine t. So that's gonna be uh, negative sine, or let me leave it as negative cosine squared t, sine t. And negative times a negative is, oh, wait a minute, negative times, but it's still negative. Uh, also cosine squared t sine t, dt, which is the integral from zero to pi over two of negative 2 cosine squared t sine t dt and well after integrating this notice how this will require a u substitution the derivative of cosine is negative sine we'll have the negative negative sign in here so everything is going to work nice nicely rather so that integral should be equal to two-thirds so that's the work done by uh, by the force into moving this this particle. Now let's make sense out of this result along with its uh, with, with its sign. Oh wait a minute, no, it's negative two thirds, not positive, negative, negative. So notice the direction of the vector field, the arrows in blue. You know, like they're kind of circulating. But also notice the direction of the particle along this quarter of circle. Did you notice how they're going into opposite direction? So the particle is actually, or rather the, the force is actually making extra work to, it, or it's being, it's, whole, it's being held back by the part, by the motion of the particle in the opposite direction. Now, uh, they're also asking us to evaluate the integral or maybe not. Well, yes, orientation of the curve, see, is important because what if, in this case, uh, we had the other order, so for the other order in the other direction from pi over 2 to 0, so the integral from pi over 2 to 0, f dr, will be positive two thirds if we were if we were going in the opposite direction because actually the, the basically the particle is going with the flow all right so no need to no need to do any work actually all right and we have one more piece piece of information here well that's actually that's actually reworking uh, whoops that's what I'm supposed to be writing here all right in the opposite direction all right so another example evaluate the integral ftds well of course not arc length but rather uh fdr where for the same vector for the same vector on oh, no, it's a different vector valid function that's f of x y equals x y i mean x i y j oriented path given by C, uh, where C is a counterclockwise around the triangle with these vertices. So, number one, let's draw the triangle right here. So, let's see what's going on. So we have the vertices of the triangle, zero, zero, one, zero, and zero, one. That is, it's gonna, the particle is gonna go like this going to do C1, let's call it C1, and let's call this C2 and C3, okay? And it's going in this direction, by the way. It's important to point the direction in which it's going. So it's going, it's going from 
zero zero to one one and the one zero rather and then from one zero to zero one and then back to zero zero so in this case to evaluate this integral that's uh, the integral over c of f dotted with t ds that's the same as evaluating f dr over c as well but in this case we need to evaluate three different integrals recall that this is in fact uh, piecewise smooth curve so we, we have to parameterize three of them number one this horizontal segment and then this diagonal line and then this vertical segment all right so so let's see um, the first segment c1 me for c1 this is what we're going to do we have to come up with r of t which in this case well that's going to be t comma zero well how do we get that t comma zero well notice that along the path c it's only the the x that changes and it changes by one unit that one cha that change into one unit that gives rise to the vector essentially one comma one comma zero and that component of the vector is the coefficient of t and zero for y because y doesn't change at all well we also need oh and by the way recall that when we parameterize using the initial and final point of the of the, of the vector that gives rise to the vector valued function that means that this always goes from zero to one all right okay maybe over here so i'm going to need extra space so we need the derivative also r prime of t and that's a one comma zero and we're ready to get this um this uh, this function so and in this case what do we have? Um, so that's t. So in this case, okay. This is our x. This is our y. If we plug in this x and this y into our vector valid function, this f will become t comma zero. Okay. So that's the f portion of the vec of the integrand. So that's the integral from zero to one of uh, t comma zero. So in this case, it's a coincidence that this first vector I'm writing in the integrand is exactly the same as r of t because see the form of the vector va of, of the vector field. It's x. It's simply x y. If we had something like x squared y y cube z or something, well. So in this case, it's, it's just a coincidence, and then times the derivative, which is one dt. So doing the product, the, the, the dot product, that's the integral from zero to one, t times one, that's a t, and zero times zero, that's just t, dt, and well, the result of this integral will be simply one half, all right? Now let's parameterize the second path, the second part, the second piece of the path, that's C2. So C2, and well, in this case, notice how uh, this is going to be a diagonal line. So let me, let me write down the equation of that diagonal line. So that diagonal line contains the points uh, 1, 0 and 0, 1. Finding the slope m equals so 0 minus 1 is negative 1 over 1 minus 0 that's 1 that's m equals negative 1 and using the point slope form well actually we have a y-intercept of, of 1 so we can just write this as a y as a y equals to negative x plus 1 and recall that whenever we have a rectangular function like this y equals some function of x uh, the easiest way to parameterize uh, a, a function in, in x y it's to give t the to make to make uh, t the, the well in this case I'm gonna make t equals to equals the y okay 
for whatever reason it's given like this yes so that's uh, r of t oops no the color that's going to be negative t plus 1 comma t and this to make sure that it goes from 0 to to 1 so an observation here, notice how we, we always um, parameterize our equations in a way that we always get this 0 to 1, 0 to 1, because, well, it always helps to just plug in a 1 as one of the limits of integration and have 0 the other limit of integration to reduce calculations, because another way to parameterize is go from 0 to 1, and then from 1 to 2, and then from 2 to 3, you know? And, and which makes sense to go in numerical order. However, it makes our doing it from 0 to 1 uh, for every single integral makes, uh, makes our, our work a lot easier. So, the derivative uh, that's going to be negative 1, comma 1. And we may go about setting up the integral from 0 to 1. Negative t plus 1, t. Negative 1, 1, dt. Dot product to come up with a scalar function and then integrate the scalar function. That's the integral from 0 to 1 of negative times a negative that's positive t minus 1 and t times 1, that's just t, dt. And combining like terms, that's the integral from 0 to 1, 2t two minus 1, dt. And integrating this, uh, that should be 0. That should be zero. So that's the first part of the integral. Let's go about the third part of the integral and see what's gonna, what's gonna happen. So the result that we're gonna get about this situation, it's going to be, uh, it's gonna actually pave the way for what we're gonna do in the, not in the next topic, but in the following section in 17.3, which is conservative vector fields. You'll see about it. So in the meantime, C3, which is the segment from the point 0, 1 to the, to the point 0, 0. So C3, that gets parameterized um, 0, comma, negative t plus 1. And this is the parameterization in order to keep getting from the getting the integral from 0 to 1. So and again you, you might you might want to check evaluate this at 0 well 0 is 0 and 0 comma 1 so and so that's a vector 0 1 and at 1 that that's a point 0 1 rather and at 1 well that's still 0 and then 1 1 minus 1 is 0 so it's still it's still the same. It's going to take us back to the origin. So, R prime, that's a zero, negative one, and we got everything ready to evaluate the integral from zero to one. So that's the vector zero, negative t plus one, and zero, negative one, dt. Just did the dot product. 0 times 0 is just 0. I don't need to write that 0. And negative t plus 1 times negative 1, that's actually t minus 1, dt. And that's going to give us a negative 1 half. All right, so now that we found the work along the three different paths, so uh, you'll see what's going to happen. So in this case, uh, the total work done in this case uh, that'll be the total work that's going to be the work done for C1 plus the work done for C2 plus the work done for C3. And in this case, all we do is add 1 half plus 0 plus negative 1 half, or rather simply minus a half. 
and I know the whole result ends up being a zero, so all the work to be a zero will. So, uh, I would like to think of this problem like, remember when you first learned to differentiate the limit definition? So it was kind of a painful process to do all this x plus delta x, rationalize, factor, simplify, uh, what else, uh, simpl simplify complex fractions. So that's essentially what we're doing here, doing a problem the long way. So in the next section, we are going to learn that this particular or this, uh, of this particular vector field is conservative, then therefore we can just integrate, uh, help, do a very simple integral instead of doing all this work, all right? In the meantime, well, we have to do it like the long way, but in the, before looking at con, uh, conservative vector fields, we're gonna look at one more form of line integrals, and that is the differential form, all right? So recall that big F is it's a vector field of the a vector field of, of the form big F of x y where the component i is the f function and g is the in the direction of j and c whatever whatever we are or along where we are integrating it's some fun, vector valid function r of t x uh, depending on t in the direction of y and y of t in the direction of j. Well, so we can rewrite the integral and write it in differential form. So number one, this f, so this is uh, the integral over c of f, which is, let, which is simply f comma y, no, f, f g. And what is this dr vector? Well, this dr vector is the derivative of x, with respect t and and the second component that's going to be dy dt that's the derivative of the vector valid function the derivative of its components and well in this case with respect with respect t so let's do the dot product component by component so that's f dx dt plus g dy dt, recall the dot product, we multiply uh, component wise dt. So now that we have this scalar function, we can actually simplify this dt with this dt and that dt. And that's going to leave us with the following form. That's the differential form because um, that's f dx plus g dy. So in this case, it's differential form, but in this case, the one that we're going to differentiate is the vector field this time, not, uh, not the other, not, well, actually, well, the R of t will be differentiated as well. And well, let's look at one example for, one example for an integral in differential form. Uh, I think these ones are uh, a lot more straightforward than the one that we just did because, well, you'll see. So we have this integral over c of z squared dx plus x squared dy plus y squared dz. And that integral uh, is going to be evaluated over c, which is the line segment from 1, 0, 0 to 4, 1, 2. So they're asking us to then evaluate the integral um, along the same line, but going in the opposite direction. Well, you know what happens in the opposite direction if essentially this integral represents the work done by the force field onto moving the particle? Well, that means uh, uh, that's going backwards. Well, depend well, depending on the result that we obtain initially, we if we get a positive well going in the opposite direction, it's just going to change the sign uh, of work. All right. Well, so. Uh, number one, how about we find the vector PQ? That way we can parameterize that line segment. All right, so uh, so PQ is, is the vector 4 minus 1, which is 3, 1 minus 0, which is 1, and 2 minus 0, which is 2. Okay, 
So when we set or when we define the parametric equations, we're going to have an x of t, a y of t, and a z of t. <clears throat> All right, so recall that these are linear equations. These three, these three parametric equations are linear equations that include a t. And the coefficient of t is always the, co the components of the vectors 3, 1, and 2. And plus, the constant term of each is always the initial point. And, we, and, and when, we param, when we parameterize this way, this is again to make our lives easier and define, well, number one, our integral or whatever we want to do between 0 and 1. Because, again, isn't it always great to integrate just from 0 to 1, not crazy numbers? All right. Of course, I mean, if you Google or you find videos on YouTube or other resources on how to parameterize lines or other kinds of functions, there's plenty of ways. There's many, many ways to parameterize. However, uh, I believe this is the simplest way because that, we, that takes us only between 0 and 1. In other kinds of parameterizations, in other methods, you will have to define other intervals of t that could be from 2 to 5 or from 17 to 23. And well, if you apply this to integrating, well, that may not be the most efficient way to work into the situation. So this will be 3t plus 1t and 2t. And well, of course, um, t goes between 0 and 1. All right. So we may go ahead and, well, not yet. Because if x Because we need the differentials, right? We need the differentials. So dx equals 3, dy equals 1, and dz equals to 2. Those dx, dy, dz are going to be here, and actually I'm going to multiply by t, of course, right? But but in this case, that dt will be common to all these terms when we set it up in the integral. And, well, that's going to take us back to a single variable integral. A single integral, not even a double integral. So, and yes, double and triple integrals are going to come back at the end of the semester when we look at uh, uh, Green's theorem, Stokes's and Divergence theorem, because we're going to look at circulations about... Uh, surfaces and about uh, planar so and that's going to be defined in terms of doubles and triples all right so ah, what's okay yes yeah, so the integral the integral of from 0 to 1 of okay z squared so what's z isn't it 2t 2t quantity squared and uh, this should be, uh, there's a little typo here. So, this one right here, there should be a plus, oh my god, no. Let me rewrite it again. So that's the integral of c, that's uh, z squared dx, and then that there has to be a plus x squared dy plus y squared dz okay yeah it looks like i missed one x here and another plus sign okay so that's uh times dx but what's dx dx isn't it three plus x squared the quantity x squared which is 3t plus one and times, in this case, dy, but what did we get for dy? Isn't that just times 1? dt, well, I'm not going to write the dt yet. I'm going to write it for the whole integral. Plus uh, 2t, oh, wait, no, that's y squared, which is just t squared, times dz, which in this case is 2, and, well, this dt, 
that I wrote at the very end is going to account for every single term, basically factoring out a single dt. And well, that's just an integral from zero to one. It's going to be a polynomial. So let's find out what this will be. So number one, that's a 2t quantity squared. That's going to be a 4t squared. But that times three, isn't that a 12t squared? And well, expanding this binomial, that's going to be plus 9t squared plus 6t plus 1, and then plus 2t squared, all differential t with respect t, rather. All right, so let's combine terms so we can integrate this function. So that's, uh, that's going to give us a total of 12 plus 9 plus 2 squares. Well, that's uh, 23 t squared. 23 t squared plus 60 plus 1 dt. And while well, integrating all this, well, we should get 23 t cubed over 3 plus 3 t squared plus t from 0 to 1. And after doing the fundamental theorem of calculus that evaluating over 1 minus evaluating over 0, that should be 35 thirds. And I believe they're also asking us to evaluate the integral along the same line, however, going in the opposite direction. So, going in the opposite direction, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go like this, in the opposite. And the integral... I'm just going to say the integral over c equals to negative 35 over 3 because again direction matters. So if in this case, uh, in, the, in, the, in the first place we got a positive value, well, the value of the integral in the opposite direction shouldn't be, should, should, it, it shouldn't be surprising that we would get the value with the opposite sign. Alright, just to summarize the different types of line integrals that we cover over here. Number one, uh, to summarize here, orientation matters when we are dealing with integrals of the form or over, of integrals over vector fields or line integrals in differential form, which is the one that we finished uh, we, that we just finished with. However, on the other hand, orientation does not matter when evaluating line integrals with respect to the arc length, which is the which was the very first example that we did. If you do it in in, a, in the other direction, you should get the same thing. So it's. It's just something weird about this kind of integrals. And it's important to know how to how these line integrals work because well some of you are going to take maybe a complex analysis when you transfer to your four-year college. And uh, so you're gonna look again at these line integrals, but they're gonna call they're gonna be called contour integrals, and it's essentially about the same about the same vector fields instead, but instead of calling them vector fields, these are complex functions where you have a function, you know, like uh, uh, let me let me say z squared. Let me give you an example of how before take before going to a break. In complex analysis, you work with functions of x, comma y, but in this case, this is really the real part and the imaginary part. So, if for example you have the function f of z, f of z equals to z squared, but replace this into functions of x, y, this is x plus i, y, quantity squared, that's going to be x squared plus 2 times x, y times i, plus i, y squared. And redefining this, so that's x squared, but i squared, remember i squared from complex numbers is in that negative one? So that's going to be plus 2xy i and then minus 
y squared. So now we need to group the reals with the reals, the imaginaries with the imaginaries. x squared minus y squared minus 2xyi. And in this case, well, this is essentially our real part and this is our imaginary part. So, and, and if you look at this function, they look like the vector fun like the vector field functions in terms of x and y, but in this case, they are defining complex functions, com functions in the complex plane. And, um, and well, once, once you evaluate these integrals, well, they're going to look a lot similar to this line integral, but over there, they're called contour integrals, all right?